Free fly access to Maverick's aircraft carriers, plus a development update on this week's news for Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's plenty going on, so let's take a look. The latest feedback snapshot gives us some insight as to what to expect from development over the coming months. This snapshot has been updated for the 30th of June, so this is the latest information. It also contains quite a few changes, so it's definitely worth taking a close look at. Now, as many of you will be aware in terms of July itself, this is going to be a relatively quiet month. It's one of the first months, in fact, that there's not going to be a content update for Microsoft Flight Simulator. No sim updates and no world updates this month. Essentially, pretty much everything has been pushed back by around about one month or so in order to attempt to give Microsoft and Asobo some breathing room to get the sim in order. There's been quite a few problems over the recent updates and the recent patches, so these really do need addressing. No big updates then until towards the end of August. Meanwhile though, we've got some insight as to what's going on with active development. So, starting with the wishlist for active development, we've got helicopters and gliders. We all know about these. Uh, previously, the feedback snapshot has been coming, saying they're coming in the uh, fourth quarter of 2022. But this has now been changed to say they're going to be included with Sim Update 11, which of course is also known as the 40th Anniversary Edition. In terms of bugs, we've got the feedback snapshot here for the last three months. There's a few points here. We we'll start with the one at the top, massive FPS drops because of Sim Update 9. Now, this is something we're well aware of. This has caused problems for both PC users as well as Xbox users, both uh, the Series X as well as the Series S. This previously was under investigation. In fact, many, many things were under investigation in the previous feedback snapshot, that leads to some rather funny comments stating that both Microsoft and Asobo are now a detective agency. But nonetheless, this has now changed from under investigation to started, so they're definitely working on performance issues. In fact, it's worth mentioning a related issue at this particular moment. Not everyone will probably be aware that Microsoft and Asobo are doing a very focused uh, Xbox stability test. The Xbox has been especially hit with problems over the previous months, so it's very good to see Microsoft doing some public testing here. The most recent statement on this reads, Regarding the ongoing Xbox stability testing, we've received a lot of data on the out-of-memory crashes on Xbox and are now analysing the information and investigating a few different cases. The information we've received so far has been hugely beneficial to the team. Thank you very much for those who are participating. So, like I say, really nice to see that this is going on. It's something that has, well, long been needed. They perhaps let it fester for a little bit too long, but at least they are on the board now with this. So, it's going to be interesting to see how this actually pans out. Anyway, moving back to that feedback snapshot. The second issue here that has been actually now fixed is Italian cities covered in trees. This come with World Update 9, which was focused on Italy, you may well remember. And in fact, in the background on the screen right here, you can see me flying over Milan. Previously, when I flew over here, it was chock full of trees. And whilst there's still some trees here, quite a few in fact, it now looks far more reasonable and uh, far less apocalyptic. Good to see this one was fixed then. Moving down the issues on the feedback snapshot, Top Gun Maverick countdown numbers are not disappearing. So work on this has now started, previously under investigation. Back to the Xbox Sim Update 9 crash to desktop from the world map. This has now been started, work on that's been started. Uh, again, that's probably very much related to the ongoing testing as well. Talking of ongoing things, there's still some performance issues for long haul flights. And I've actually seen this mentioned uh, quite a few times in the comment sections to my videos, not to mention on various forums. So something that definitely needs to be fixing. This is a new issue now on the issue tracker, uh, on the feedback snapshot rather. It wasn't here previously, but now they say the work on this has been started. Further, very much related to performance issues, is the serious stutter issues when looking around in on the Series X. And this has been in place or an issue since Sim Update 9. So, yeah, we all know Sim Update 9 has definitely brought a lot of problems with it. Seems that Microsoft and Asobo are very much aware of that as well. So, yeah, uh, work on this has also started. Nice to see. Moving on to bugs that have been here for the lifetime of the Sim so far. So, around about two years at this point, we've got this issue. After playing for a few hours, frame rates drop from 40 frames per second down to 5 frames per second. Work on this has now started. Again, that was previously under investigation. 
So yeah, this feedback snapshot gives the very clear impression that Microsoft and the Sobo are now working on all of these problems. That's very much one of the reasons that they've uh, delayed the Sim Update 10 back towards August. We can see the work is going on here, so hopefully that all pays off. Returning back to the wish list, this is a wish list from the last three months. Not much in the way of changes right here, but there is one particular change, and it's a new entry which states implement some sort of LOD, level of detail fading system, to help reduce pop in. So, as you're flying around, you may have noticed this in the past. Uh, there's also pop in as well as pop out. As you're flying over cities, occasionally buildings may sort of just appear out of nowhere in the distance or just pop in. But it's particularly apparent when it comes to terrain. Terrain does morph a lot as well. Not really sure which this is referring to, probably just the scenery, but if there's some fixes going in for terrain as well at some point, that would be very much welcome. Either way, yeah, this is a new entry. Moving on to Wishlist Lifetime, we've got four changes here. Some of these are new entries, others are work that started, whereas previously it was saying not started. So lower resources in menu and whilst downloading. This is where your computer is working its guts out, working really, really hard when you're on the main menu or when you're just downloading the updates. Really shouldn't be too much really going on in the background to put such high demands on your CPU and the GPU. And I know some people are quite concerned with the energy uses here, especially when it comes to, well, I guess the environment, but also the cost of living problems as well and energy prices dramatically increasing. You don't really want your computer burning away whilst it's downloading an update. Sometimes these updates take a very long time to download as well. Another issue here is a taxi navigation ribbon. People want a toggle for that. That's something that uh, has been started, I think, or at least been requested. And talking of things being requested is the multiplayer nameplate. We want an on-off key mapping for that as well, apparently. So, yeah, that one makes sense. Finally, uh, the last entry here for something that has been started. Uh, actually, I think it's something we've kind of seen in the recent Maverick update. People want to see wakes for AI ships. This is something, like I say, I think you can see on the newly added aircraft carriers, but doesn't seem to yet be added to other ships as well. At any rate, talking about aircraft carriers, it was a big surprise to me and well, probably quite a few other people as well that the Maverick aircraft carrier was limited purely to the Maverick expansion. Not available worldwide, you can't access it in free fly, so no launching from aircraft carriers or landing on them. A very, very strange decision and somewhat unfortunate. I do wonder if it was uh, in the licensing terms for that particular content. Either way, we'll probably never really know, although I do know from the recent Q&A that Microsoft said they will look into it, whatever that actually means. Meanwhile, though, we can depend upon the community. A great modder has finally made these aircraft carriers available when in free flight. The mod is fairly limited at the moment. You can't actually take off from the aircraft, or you can take off from the aircraft carrier, but you can't set it as your starting position. There's a number of aircraft carriers dotted around the world. These are all actually in motion, and you fully can land on these. They do have the arrestor cables as well as the uh, launch catapults as well, so essentially fully a work in. The mod is very, very easy to use and very easy to install. You can download it from the website flightsim.to. Just go down there, uh, download the file, and then copy and paste it into your community folder. Once you've got that, the aircraft carriers will be fully available on your world map. You can access them and locate them by going to the search on the world map and simply typing in carrier. As mentioned, these are available in various different locations, seven in total. These are the Florida Keys, the Gulf of California on the Mexican West Coast, the Gulf of Mexico Open Sea, Long Island, New York, Oregon, San Francisco, as well as South Carolina. Now, each of these aircraft carriers is in motion, so they do have a heading. For example, the one in Florida Keys has a heading of 245. The one in the Gulf of California has a heading of 135. And meanwhile, the one in the Gulf of Mexico has a heading of 090. So each of these are in motion, like I say, and heading in a set direction. Should add to the challenge and the fun of landing as well as launching from these particular aircraft carriers. In terms of functionality, you do have the landing signal officer, which will give instructions on a safe approach to the carrier. There's the arresting cables, which we mentioned, that you can taxi on deck, and there's also a functioning catapult. Finally, while you can't spawn directly on the carrier surface, this apparently is something that is in progress, and maybe we're about to do it in the future. Meanwhile, though, 
there is a workaround for that and that is listed on the flightsim.to website so if you want to do that just check out the instructions everything you need to know is listed in the video description below well worth taking a look at that then brings us to an end of this video as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys and girls next time